Hello, dear friends. Today we are going to learn about a drama thriller film called The Girl Who Escaped, The Kara Robinson Story, from 2023. I wish you a good viewing. Kara Robinson wakes up at her best friend's house. The girls are planning a trip to the lake today, but before they go, Jess has to water the flowers and take a shower. Jess asks Kara to help her water the flowers so they can go to the lake sooner. Kara leaves the house and starts watering the lawn. At this time, a car pulls up to the house and a strange man gets out. He approaches the girl and asks if her parents are home. Kara answers that this is not her house, but the house of her friend. The man pulls out a gun and orders the girl to follow his instructions. He leads Kara to the car and forces her to climb into a blue container. Jess finishes taking a shower and goes outside, but cannot find Kara. Meanwhile, the man stops in a deserted place to tie the girl up. As Kara goes to the trunk to get a rope, she realizes that it is too dangerous to escape now. She decides to obey the kidnapper's rules, hoping to find a way to escape later. The man ties her hands and gags her. Meanwhile, Jess calls Kara's mother to report Kara's disappearance. The man brings Kara to his house, removes the gag, and asks her to keep quiet. He takes the girl to the bedroom and starts asking her about her family and friends. After that, the man asks her to call him Daddy and threatens her again with a gun. He orders the girl to lie down on the bed, then sits down next to her and begins to take off her clothes. Then they go to the shower together, and Kara tries to remember all the details around her. Kara's mother calls her ex-husband and tells him about her daughter's disappearance. The woman calls the police and asks them to start searching, but the policeman is sure that the girl just ran away from home. Kara's mother does not believe this and insists on searching. The man gives Kara his t-shirt and asks her what school she goes to. Kara decides to find out as much information as possible about her kidnapper. The man tells her that he was very smart in school and served in the Navy, from which he was recently honorably discharged. The man promises to let Kara go if she behaves well. He offers her a cigarette, but she refuses. In the afternoon, they watch TV together, and Kara notices cages with animals. She asks the man if he works with animals after serving in the Navy. He replies that he works with compressors. Kara memorizes all the information she receives. The man promises to let her go home again, but first he wants to watch a movie with her. In the evening, Kara asks for permission to go to the toilet. The man gives her permission, but leaves the door open and watches her. When Kara wants to wash her hands, she asks for permission. The man is angry with her for not wanting to eat dinner and reminds her that she must follow his orders. Kara offers to help with the cleaning to distract him. While she is cleaning, she memorizes the dentist's phone number on the refrigerator and the notes on the calendar. Meanwhile, Kara's mother goes to the police station, trying to convince the sheriff that her daughter could not have run away from home. The sheriff says that she shouldn't worry, he is sure that the girl will return soon. The man and Kara sit down on the couch again and turn on the news. The man says that the police have not started the search and that her parents and friends do not care about her. He becomes aggressive and orders the girl to go to the bedroom. The man gags Kara and goes into another room to make a phone call. Kara has a panic attack and can't breathe. The man returns, ungags her and gives her a pill to calm her down. At night, Kara notices the man opening a strange chest. He orders her to lie down on the bed, chains her hands and feet, and goes to sleep. In the morning, Kara wakes up first and tries to free her hands. She succeeds and cautiously leaves the house. Kara runs to the road and stops a car. She asks the two men to give her a ride to the police and to memorize the number of the apartment she escaped from. Kara goes to the police station and tells the officer that she has been kidnapped. She gives her name and explains that she managed to escape. Lieutenant Roland calls Kara's mother and tells her that her daughter has been found. The policeman asks Kara if she remembers where the apartment where the kidnapper lives is located. Kara replies that she does not, but she can go there and try to remember. The lieutenant says that she will help them a lot if she does. They arrive, and Kara can't remember which apartment she ran from because all the houses look the same. The police stop a man walking by and describe the suspect's appearance, but the man says that there are many people here who fit that description. Kara gets out of the car and says that there are many animals in her kidnapper's apartment, and there is a large poster of a wolf on the wall. Hearing this, the man immediately realizes who she is talking about and gives the apartment number. The police head there. Meanwhile, Kara's mother arrives at the police station and begins to resent the fact that her daughter was taken to the crime scene, but Kara returns and calms her down. The sheriff arrives at the suspect's apartment and orders a storming of the building, but the suspect escapes. Sergeant Jennings asks Kara to tell him everything she knows about the man who kidnapped her. Kara says that a few years ago the man served in the Navy and his wife is now at Disneyland. She also says that the man has a parrot named Clyde and gives the name of his dentist and phone number. Kara also mentions that the man has high anxiety and sees a psychiatrist. Sergeant Jennings is very surprised that the girl remembers everything, but this information will help to find and punish the criminal. A doctor enters the room and Kara has to undergo a gynecological examination. She asks the doctor and the police not to tell her mother about it. 
Meanwhile, the police find women's clothes in a drawer and realize that Kara is not the only victim. They post flyers with the suspect's photo all over the city. Sheriff Price arrives at the precinct where Kara's mother had reported and says that the suspect has kidnapped and killed several girls and Kara was supposed to be next. He doesn't understand why Sheriff Stevens didn't start the search right away. Kara returns home and all the neighbors come to support her. Kara doesn't like the extra attention. Sergeant Jennings comes to Kara and tries to explain that she shouldn't be offended by these people because unlike them, Kara is a strong person and doesn't want to be a victim. Kara returns home and tells her mother that she will go to Ryan's tonight, but her mother does not allow her to do so. Kara doesn't understand why she has to give up her life because of what happened. She doesn't want to be afraid all her life, she just wants to live a normal life. But her mother is very worried and does not want to let the girl leave the house. The suspect's wife comes to the police and says that she does not know where her husband is. She does not believe that he is guilty of the crimes. At this point, the suspect's sister arrives at the police station and tells them that he recently called her and is now in a hotel. The police immediately go to arrest him. Meanwhile, Sheriff Stevens arrives at Kara's house, but the girl is not happy to see him because he didn't want to look for her. He tells the girl that she shouldn't be so brave because the suspect is still at large and might come back for her. He tells her that the suspect kidnapped several girls and they all died. But Kara is not afraid and demands that the sheriff do his job. Meanwhile, Sheriff Price receives a report that the suspect has escaped from the hotel, but the police are already on his trail and will soon apprehend him. The sheriff is surprised that a little girl not only escaped from the maniac, but was able to help the police find him. The sheriff comes to her house and tells her that the criminal will be caught soon. He says that the girl should not be a victim because she is a heroine. He thanks her and promises to let her know when they catch the criminal. After this conversation, Kara is going to go to a baseball game to support her boyfriend, but her mother does not want to let her leave the house. Kara says again that she wants to live a normal life. She says she will not let the criminal take her life and goes to the baseball game. Meanwhile, the police find the suspect's location. After a while, the man appears on the street and a chase begins. The police catch the criminal, but he pulls out a gun and shoots himself in the head. Kara returns home, and her mother does not tell her what happened. In the morning, she tells Kara about the suspect's suicide, and Kara is very angry about it. At this time, the sheriff arrives and apologizes for not telling her right away. The girl says that she would like to look the criminal in the eye before he goes to jail, but the sheriff says that she shouldn't worry because the maniac realized his defeat before he died. Kara realizes that now she doesn't have to testify in court about what happened, and her mom won't worry about it either. The sheriff says that he has never met a girl as strong as her, and he would have no doubt hired her to be a police officer.